and city. In the meantime, his first interview in more than five years, the very first chairperson of the IEBC, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, Ahmed Itzak Hassan, joins us. I'm telling you, he's written a book called Referee of a Dirty, Ugly Game. And inside it goes on to say, in the theater of Kenya's elections, an insider's account, which is exactly what he's done in detail. 559 pages. That's <coughs> right, I read every one. 40 pages are uh, photographs. <laughs> 40, yeah? Yeah, about 40 pages. They're great photographs, by the way, yeah. great photographs. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, the, yeah. the title of the book, Yes. when I was writing the book, I was told by my editor, don't think about a title now. Let's just write the story, your, your story. Yeah. It's going to come itself. The, st the title will come itself. And uh, through to her words, I think, uh, towards the end of the book, you realize that's when I discovered Really, I was just a, a referee of a very dirty game. <laughs> but again, if you, I was also comparing it with the soccer. Pol we always compare soccer and politics, you know. As you know that. And, and uh, Pele called the soccer, you know, the beautiful game. Correct. So I was contrasting it with politics. It's not a beautiful game. No. It's a very dirty and ugly game. And in Kenya, it's particularly ugly. It's vicious, sound, yes. Like, yes, yes, yes. Because of what? And you mentioned in the book, you talk about we're still tribal bigots. Yeah. Right? After, I mean, if you look at the election results, it's, it's more or less like a, an ethnic census of our, our communities, how we vote. And uh, we, we can't escape that fact. And so we, we have to find a way of... Uh, managing the electoral uh, contest in a way that uh, communities don't feel left out uh, and that we have uh, a much more inclusive uh, govern governance structure yeah. and also a system which can give uh, the loser of the election, especially presidential, an incentive to concede defeat. When you are up here and you get, you get 49% of the votes and your, your person gets 50.04% of the vote and he wins. And the following day you are nothing, completely nothing. You, it is a, a winner takes all, loser takes nothing. I think that's the, one of the things that makes our politics very vicious, very ugly. So I think uh, at some point we have to revisit uh, our system of government and, our, and also our electoral system. Mm. But uh, and it, in any case, it's more than, the Constitution now is more than 10 years old. It is actually due for review. It is, yeah, right? Yeah. Talk to me th through the uh, 2012 election, 2013 elections. Yes. Well, that was an election which was, uh, of course, uh, the first election under the new Constitution. Uh, we had a very unique case where uh, two suspects of, of, of war crimes who are going to be, who are charged in the Hague, who are contesting for elections. A lot of the international community were not supporting them. They were against the, them being, uh, uh, and of course, I talk about uh, uh, Ambassador Jerry Carson. You flew to America to, yeah. to talk to him personally, didn't you? No, no, I, I had gone for something else, but then I passed him also right and told him, you know, what you said is giving the mileage to two candidates. It's, it's being used as a campaign tool. And his quote was, choices have consequences. Choices have consequences. I think in a way he meant, of course, you know, if you elect these two, you have, we are going to deal with the consequences of that. Uh, the same thing with, I think, uh, the UK ambassador to Kenya. He said, you know, we are going to only have essential contacts with them if they win the election. So there was a lot of, uh, a lot of riding on it. Uh, Kofi Annan was following election very closely, called me from Geneva uh, to get an update on the election. But these two guys all had uh, mobilized the communities and the turnout was very large, very big. Uh, in fact, uh, by midnight, they were still voting in some parts of, Ke of Kenya, especially in Central Province and Nairobi. Yeah. We still had people on the queue lining to, yeah. to vote. So we had 86% voter turnout, the biggest in, in Kenya. And uh, of course, for the election for president, uh, the, the fact is that we also ran into problems. 
our events do not uh, work very well. Yeah. There's us, there's us uh, transmission do not work very well. And uh, we had a very useless ICT director called Ogmandi, who did not help us much. Uh, but we had a very good uh, consultant from IFES called Mike Yard, who was very helpful. But uh, I think uh, if we have somebody like uh, Onsando at the time, yeah. maybe I think uh, we'll have had uh, a more success with the technology that we used. But uh, it was a very close election in terms of the, the actual win of uh, Uhuru. There was a lot of uh, expectation that there will be a second round, that Uhuru will not make it for the first round. Right. But he, he, he managed to get that, uh, uh, to go over the, the threshold by 8,400. 8,400. That's it? That's it. Of course, the other lead was more than, I think, 500,000 mm -hmm. between him and Raila. But you see, the one that makes him to be the president yeah. is the 50% plus one. Right. So it was 8,400. And that made the difference. Uh, I spoke at length to the, prime, to the prime minister to try and, you know, persuade him to concede. Yeah. Because I thought that uh, concession would really help the country. Uh, and at, at, for some... For some time, I thought he was going to actually do that. But uh, of course, he was advised by the lawyers that you have to exhaust all the dispute resolution mechanisms which yes. are there. So, and of course, I called Uhuru and uh, we had a long ch chat with him also. And uh, that's it, the rest is history. The unfortunate part, of course, is that uh, I was the face of the result announcement. By law, the commissions, the chairman, is a commission is going to do the whole work, but for for election for president, the chairman is the returning officer. So you are the one who's going to announce the final result, the winner, and give the certificate to the uh, president elect. And I say in the book, you see that kind of uh, marks you as the face of either the success or the failure by the other group. And when you have got 50 percent of the country voting for one person, another 50% voting for, you are obviously going to annoy a group. And uh, I, 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 I face the wrath of those uh, 50%. Yeah. Yes. They, they blamed you, didn't they? they of course, yeah, yes, yes, they blamed me. I was blamed for that. I was accused of uh, being a partisan to uh, Uhuru. And uh, some even accused me of taking money from uh, Uhuru. Mm. I mean, they were talking about 20 million shillings. Uh, I, I record a lot of, a lot of uh, anecdotes about that, that I was found uh, wearing a bui bui, going to South Sudan, uh, with trying to hide the dollars <laughs> under the bui bui. I mean, that I was in Dubai trying to open an account there, put money for, I mean, all manner of, uh, of uh, <laughs> and you see some of, the, some of these lies were repeated so often that it acquired the character of truth. Mm. One of my, my brothers even came from, I mean, uh, from Garissa and told me, you know, after, I think, after six or seven months, you know, he said, okay, now everything is now down, uh, things are okay, now bring, bring out the money. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> leave the BS out, uh, it's, it's our family. Yeah. Yeah, get, get it out. He even came with a business plan <laughs> on how to, do, how to invest the money. <laughs> Uh, nobody believed you. Of course, yeah, nobody believed me. Yeah. And uh, it is very sad because uh, the expectation is that because you are handling 25 billion worth of uh, investments or uh, worth of uh, procurement, that you get, at least you got 10% of it. So nobody believes that you have nothing from, from that, uh, that. I mean, it's very hard to run an honest election in a dishonest society. And uh, everybody expects you to be dishonest as them. Yeah. Yeah. Just speaking of sad, you speak um, very openly about um, the death of the ICT commissioner, Chris Msando. Mm -hmm. You speak about it. I mean, you, it really shook you and the commission. Yes. Uh, we, when we employed him as an ICT data manager, he was employed towards the end of our term, I mean, uh, before we left office, around October, November. And I remember the chair of the Human Resource, Human Resource Committee, Engineer Sharawe, was saying, you know, this is the names of the guys who have, whom we have selected 
for different jobs. So when it came to Chege, we, there was a very light moment when he said, you know, his name was Christopher Chege Msando. Mm -hmm. So the name Chege, you know, is not a, a Luo name. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, this must be a very a fake kuyu. <laughs> From, uh, because his name uh, Chege is not, uh, but he was a very uh, excellent guy. He was the top in the interview, and uh, he he I think he started work after I think after giving notice to the National AIDS Council where he was working. So, but I, I never I got the chance to engage with him or see his work because I left office in January, yeah. 2017. Mm -hmm. But I said in the book that I have been following his, uh, his interviews on, on public media, on TVs, and the, the way he was explaining very clearly how they is going to work the technology. And I even called uh, Ezra Chaloba, who was the CEO, and told him, you know, this guy is very good. I wish we had him in 2013, mm. because uh, some of the things that uh, went wrong, we could have, he could have assisted us. But then uh, I came back from uh, Cambridge University in July. Uh, where I used to go every year for a con and covers for elections. And then I was called by, when I came to the airport, Nairobi, I, I got a call from, uh, from uh, Chabukati and told me, you know, uh, uh, Musando is missing. Uh, I, I, was, I was surprised for how long? For almost, two, for almost one day. So we don't know what happened to him. And then, of course, the second day when I went home, I followed the story very well. I, I tried to call some of the staff in the commission. Uh, they, they were all quite uh, anxious about this guy. And then, of course, over the weekend, we saw the, the bodies uh, naked. They had been strangled together with the girl. I was very saddened, actually. I was very saddened, especially after we learned that, you know, he may have been blocked by some guys who then took over his vehicle and then uh, did the, because I, I, I think it sent a very big uh, message to the staff and the commissioners mm. also. That, you know, you, you mess up, this will happen to you. Yeah. So I think it was very uh, bad thing that happened to the commission and the staff. Uh, I mean, the chairman of the commission a week later came on TV and said, uh, I cannot guarantee a free and fair election because of what's happening. Right. So it had an effect on all of us, actually. Yeah. And uh, I feel very sad because up to now, nobody has been arrested or charged. Uh, it, it appears that we have just uh, forgotten about him and his, and his, and his family. Yeah. Yeah. And you say he was strangled, right? Yes. That's a crime of passion. Uh, yeah. Very. I mean, if you look at the way they say he has been killed, apart from the obvious torture uh, and the marks on his hand, he was, he was killed by, uh, according to the postmortem, done by the government uh, pathologist. It was by strangulation. So how, 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 how can someone do that to, I mean, the, uh, both of them were strangled, actually, even the girl. So I don't know what kind of uh, anger motivated that kind of uh, killing. Yeah. yeah. There was rumors that they cut off his thumb to use it as a... Well, uh, access to your computers. You see, what the public will perceive is uh, different from the actual thing. They may have, he, he was giving very good uh, education about the technology. And I think uh, he may have given uh, uh, the wrong impression maybe, or he was misunderstood by those who are listening to him, that he was, uh, he had the, 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 sorry, he had the key to the, to the servers. Yeah. And so, I don't know how when you cut his fingers, how one, one is going to use it to open a, a computer or open a, as a password because once you cut off the hand, it's already dead. It has no life of its own. Mm. So even those who are trying, who are torturing him, I don't think had any uh, good uh, <laughs> good knowledge about what they were doing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you also talk about your life being threatened. Yes. A, a few uh, times. I mean, once uh, they almost killed you. Yes. Uh, remember, I, I say in the book, and I explain this very well. I was engaging with the international community a lot. In 2008, it was the UN, the, 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 the ambassadors of the UK, who helped the country come back from the step back from civil war. I mean, Kofi Annan came, led a, a mediation. And so by, the, by 2009, 2010, 
Kenyans had a lot of interest and, uh, and a lot of uh, confidence in the international community. Okay, so it was part of our strategy to also engage them and make sure that they are on board. They know what, what we are doing as a commission. And I was particularly was very keen to ensure that I was advised by uh, some of Kivitu, the late Kivitu, that you know some of these uh, ambassadors they hold, they host their cocktails and even the dinners where the civil society are invited, and they, they they get wrong information. So you need to be there always so that you get to tell your, your side of the story. So it was part of my, my strategy. But I may have appeared too close to them, to some people, mm -hmm. okay? And that may have also been, has marked me for something else. Uh, on the other hand, there was uh, this uh, uh, unfortunate coincidence where this same ambassador was supporting uh, Prime Minister to, to be the candidate of choice and not uh, supporting the other uh, two candidates, Uhuru and, uh, and Ruto. So I, I suspect in, in, in the book I say that some may have misconstrued my in, interactions to, show, to, to say that I was supporting one side. And so, according to my bodyguard, I was being sent uh, a message because uh, one, one night I think uh, they attacked my, my neighbor. Uh, when my bodyguards came to come and uh, help me, as they were going back, they were shot at by officers, uh, police officers from Hadi police station. They were shot at eight times in their car, and they even brought me the, you know, the, the bullet uh, cartridges. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the worst one was uh, when I was uh, blocked by another vehicle with four guys who were armed, and one of them came out and. Uh, is, is the, way the, the, the way I was blocked was, in a way, I had to stop. You cannot go through there. It was a very rough road from the highway by, to our estate. So I was lucky because I, was, I had met with uh, two of my f former schoolmates in the mosque that night. Uh, and they were working with the CID. That time, they were working on the Al-Shabaab. They, they were fighting that terror group. But then we met them in the, you know, in the mosque, and they told me, why are you alone, chairman? With, what's happening in the country. So I told them, can you then escort me? And they had their own Subaru, you know, the flying squad. Yes. And so it is them who actually saved me because the guy who, was, who stopped me, I could see the, the pistol from his, and he had the, the now them cocking their, their, their pistols and shouting, get out, get out, you know. So he asked me, are they with you? I told him, yes. So then he went to his car, they, they removed the car from from me, and then I went to my, my house. So these officers came with me to, up to my house. Then they don't even stop. They came back to run, and they chased these other guys. Hmm. So when uh, at, in the morning, around 6 AM, they came back to me. And they told me, last night, you're very lucky. We're there with you. But this is very dangerous for you. We are very uh, sorry for you, because those guys appear to be professionals. Yeah. They would have killed you. Yes, they would have killed you. Or uh, they would have compromised you. Something. What, you, what year was that? It was, it was, the uh, election was March. This was January 2013, a month to go to the election. Mm. So what I did now, I gazetted, I gazetted the deputy uh, chairperson, my deputy, yep. as also as a deputy returning officer. Mm. So that if anything happens to me, she can take over and uh, and uh, run with the, with the election. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, did you, did you find yourself like a punching bag for all these uh, parties, all these candidates? I, only after There's the- There's a chapter called Everybody's Punching Bag. Yes, yes, I see that. And uh, you see, once we, we declare the election and uh, the result for the election, especially for president. By the way, the other elections for governor, for senator, for MPs, MCS, women rep, they are all good. Now, there's no complaint about rigging for all those elections. It always happens for the president. Yet it is the same of us who are managing the election from the polling station. It's the same of us who are doing the results collation. We have six ballot boxes in the, in the, in the polling station. So how five of them could be good and only one is always wrong, again, is something which I don't know. But uh, 
once you announce the results, I think uh, I say in the book, uh, I became the victim of uh, what, you, what it's called transferred aggression. Mm. Someone is angry with Uhuru for stealing the election, but they can't reach him because he's, a, he's in government. He has the instruments of power and, and force. And so the nearest person you can punch is the, is the referee who declared him as a winner. So sometimes the uh, election chairman, I think, uh, become a punching bag. And you see, these other candidates, like for example, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, is not someone who is a, is a very influential politician, very consequential. And he has got a big following, even, even from my own friends and my family who are supporting him. And so he has support, of course, in the media, in the, in the civil society, everywhere you go, in the, in the, even in the public uh, service. There are those who are uh, supporting the prime minister. So if you are in his wrong books, you naturally become the target for, uh, from all those uh, sides. So even the media, I think, uh, were, were part of the punching. They were punching us. I, I say it in a, in a lot of ways, uh, how they were, they were almost like outsourced to do the hounding out of the commissioners. And when we agreed to resign in uh, August, I think I say in the book, a journalist who's covering the, new, the, the, the event is, is hard saying, finally. Hmm. As if you know they have won something. And uh, that again, you know, displays the, the bias and the partisanship in the media. Yeah. And uh, for me, that was one of the most uh, difficult points. I believe the media. I, we used them a lot during the election, even before the election. They were supporting us all through. But after 2013, we became a, we became a very bad dog. So they, 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 were, they were part of the gang that was used to dehumanize the commissioners. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that why, one of the reasons why you haven't given an interview in more than five years? You said you were yes, very angry. Yes, I was very angry with the media. I, I, I felt that uh, we were we were publicly, uh, uh, we, were, we were put on trial and convicted without uh, any hearing mm. from anybody. And you see, I was told a long time ago that uh, you can never fight with the media unless you are one or you own one. Mm. Uh, but again, uh, uh, I think I had uh, Michelle Gaido told me also, you know, media is not, it's not your friend or your enemy. It's a business. And so uh, even in that time, I could see that it was, it was selling to bash us. I don't think media was getting any positive coverage if they were praising us for any work as we did. Yeah. So I, again, there were a lot of other factors at play. But for me, for me, it was uh, the fact that uh, our media, which was supposed to be there, the benchmark for truth was uh, being used by politicians to do the, their bidding. Yeah. yeah. All along this time, did you try and make amends with the former prime minister? I say in the book, you know, I, I met with uh, Junet. Junet Mohammed, yeah. Yes. First of, first of all, I have a lot of respect for the prime minister. And uh, my first job as a commissioner of the Constitution of Kenya Review Commission CKRC. CKRC. He was chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on the Constitution. Mm. They interviewed us, and I was among those who were selected for, from Northern Province. So that was the uh, one thing that uh, I always uh, give him credit, because there were attempts to try and fill with our, our, our nomination, but uh, he, he refused. Uh, and then, of course, I became chairman of IIC with his support, and even IBC with his support. So. If anyone I have respect and gratitude for, to is him. And I really would have wished him to win the election, to become our president, because uh, we, we needed to, to test, to test the, his presidency. But of course, as a chairman of the Electoral Commission, I only announced the, the will of the people, the results of the, of the elections. So that was for me a very difficult uh, time. And, uh, but uh, what can you do? That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the game, yeah. name of the game. Yeah. So, but uh, I, I, so we, it was never personal. But when they started uh, the protest against the commissioners, and I saw him seated on the tarmac, 
with the Kalonzo Musioka, with the uh, Rotangula, James Orengo. And I was up there on sixth floor watching them. And then they were tear gassed. And the tear gas now whiffed up to the sixth floor. <laughs> we even tested part of it. <laughs> that was a very low moment for me because you can't have a former prime minister seated outside a uh, protesting against you and expect you're going to stay in that office long. So, but it was not, uh, of course, he was doing what he had to do. Uh, they got us out eventually. I, I, but I recall in the book when I met him uh, in, a, in an airplane coming back from du uh, New York. He was coming back from uh, Morocco. We met in Dubai. We were coming on the same flight. And we had a very long chat. He told me, come, let's talk. Kijana yeah. wangu. Uh, come. So we had a very good uh, discussion. And uh, he was unhappy that uh, my lawyer, Ahmed Nasir, had called him uh, a perennial loser who will never accept defeat, but has to blame others for his uh, loss. And uh, of course, I, I apologized to him, told him uh, I didn't uh, approve of it, but uh, it's, please uh, accept my apology. And he did, actually, after that. He never, he, he refused his, uh, his politicians to bring it up again. Mm. Telling them, he has explained to me, I believed him, and uh, that's now gone. Now, after we left office, of course, uh, during the, the Joint Parliamentary, Parliamentary Select Committee on the removal of the IEBC commissioners, uh, Junet came to my house and, you know, to try and uh, see whether we can uh, talk about uh, my, our exit. And he was very surprised. I told him, we have long, we all want to go out, but uh, you have to stop this witch hunt. We can't go out with this... Uh, and fair allegations against hanging all of us. We must get our, our, our name cleared. So I called the following, in the morning now, I called a, a very close friend of mine who I know from UK, uh, Reverend uh, Stephen Mburu. I was calling him for something else, to, to go on to the hotel where they, they were claiming that I was, I was, I was uh, given uh, $650 as a bribe from the chicken. 50 million chicken. I was, I was accused of now getting $650. That's it? That's it. According to the complaint lodged by uh, Norman Magaya, the CEO of uh, ODM. So I was trying to follow up again and tell him, go back to the hotel and try and see whether you can get them to uh, give us a letter. Because they had said in, uh, that they, they don't have a, their system has been changed. They don't have the records of 209. So I called him. Then he told me, you know who's in my car? The prime minister and his daughter. So he was taking them back to the airport. They had, I think the plane left them the following uh, um, the day earlier. So he was taking them. He's also, he's also a very good friend of uh, the prime minister. So Mburu is actually the guy who now told me, talk to the prime minister, he's here with me. So I spoke to him now. Again, we had a very good chat. I told him, prime minister, we, you are, your troops in, 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 in parliament are not giving us a, a breathing space. We can't go if there's this uh, witch hunt going on. We have to be given uh, a clean bill of health and a dignified exit. We actually want to go. Especially me, I was willing to go. I say in the book, I promised my mother that I will not do another election uh, since uh, 2013. So when we, we left office, and of course the election in 2017 happened, uh, there was a very violence uh, happened in the, in the country. Uh, and then in March 2018, there was a handshake between Uhuru and, uh, and Raila. And that time, after the handshake, there was this spirit of handshake going around the country. People are people are coming to his office in Capitol Hill to you know to shake his hand and to say you know even other politicians across the country were shaking hands, quote unquote, to to bring uh, unity to their communities. So I met with Junette in a, at in, a, in an art cafe in Galeria. I told him you know if this if this handshake has to come round, has to make a meaning. It must also include the, myself and the commissioners because we are victims of of, uh, of your of your anger because we declared who to the president yeah. and you you kicked us out and now you're having a handshake with him. The so, same person. I'm mean, the same person. Yeah. So it has to come round. Yeah. So he told me yes, but I agree with you. Call him, call him. So I had his I have his number. You know I never you never changed it. I called him, 
and he just picked the phone and said, Habari Kijanangu. <laughs> this is a man who I was, I was blaming for taking me out of office and yeah. telling me, Habari Kijanangu. I told him, I'm here with Jeanette and uh, I think we need to come and also have a, uh, a hand check with you and my commissioners. So he said, yeah, come, come next week on Tuesday. So I called the other commissioners now. And uh, of course, uh, we had a long chat, a long talk. And some of them were still not happy with him. They were still not happy the way they were treated. They were still not very comfortable going to go and uh, shake hands. So it didn't work. You never but went? Yeah, I never went. But of course, uh, I, I, I don't think I even, I've even seen him again. Because I, I, after that, I left uh, the country. I was in Afghanistan as a commissioner. Uh, <laughs> I was an international non-voting commissioner of the Electoral Commission. I was nominated by the UN but appointed by the president there. And so for two years, I was in Afghanistan. And then uh, another one year, I was in Somalia. So I, I was very busy in this other work. So I never really got time to follow up on my handshake yeah. with him. Well, Chairman, I want to take another break, come back, talk about your health. You, there's, there's some people, there were rumors that um, you were thoroughly ill after mm -hmm. that election. Mm -hmm. so I, I want to talk about that. Yes, okay. And also, you, you praise some people in this book. Um, other than Mutai Nguyen, uh, you talk about Martha Karua uh, yeah. in very uh, high esteem. Yes. So hold that thought. Okay. And then, of course, we'll go to the magic wall and get the responses. Keep tweeting at Queen Angie. This is riveting stuff. Riveting. Ahmed Itzak Hassan and the book. you got to grab it. Referee of a dirty, ugly game. That's Kenyan politics for you. What's your reaction? What do you think? At Kunanga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.